All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Pastalka, and I'm excited for our guest today. We got Trevor Caller here today, and we're going to be talking about the keys to accelerating execution. And if anybody knows how much I like making things happen and executing, you just got to read my profile on LinkedIn because I think in there somewhere it says I I I make things happen. <laughs> That's it. So Trevor, <laughs> awesome having you here today. I'm excited for our conversation. Me too. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Trevor, uh, now you, you, you focus on execution and I think this is just real. it's unique. First of all, I, I don't, and with your company, the execution, fa execution factor, um, what really started off where you just said, you know, I got to focus on execution. Good question. So um, I guess it's kind of evolved over time. And, you know, quite mm -hmm. often we all have plans, but it's not till we actually execute the plan that something happens, you know? So kind of in some ways our plans are like dreams, if you like, <laughs> you know, we always think about doing this or doing that. So it's not till we actually go off to do it and then, okay, now it becomes a reality. And, yeah, the focus always seems to be on like planning. If you go out there and you want to do a Google search on training on planning, you'll just get bombarded. You know, everybody's yeah. got it. If you look for um, like look for execution out there, there's very, very little. And it seems to be, it's like the missing factor. And, you know, I want it to be first off called Execution Jedi and then, you know, get Sith done. But um, I think the folks at Disney wouldn't like that. So yeah. <laughs> I had a little bit of advice from some people. And then, so I, I tweaked it. And then, you know, just sort of thinking it through. And it's really, I think what gets missed or underrated is the execution factor in what we go to do. You know, if you've got businesses trying to execute their strategy or manufacturing scheduling and then trying to go off and create that, it's really not so much the planning. Like planning is important. But as soon as, yeah. you know, we plan things and it's like give it a short period of time and that planning is kind of obsolete. It's because it's based on upon a static set of assumptions, you know, that, okay, we're going to have these machines or this is going to happen and everything's going to be great. And reality is something goes wrong and it's always changing. So it's really how we can react to that situation that makes a difference. And then mm -hmm. try to drill it down. So what are the key factors, the important things that we need to focus on to make sure that everything's moving along? It's really about you know being reactive and dynamic about about the situation where you're still trying to get to your goal, still aiming for the outcome, but how you get there might be slightly different. Yeah, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so you've got a lot of you've got training in a, a wide variety of different methodologies in manufacturing. When you look at your at your history, I mean, you've got Lean and Six Sigma and and Theory of Constraints. So and some other quality certifications too. I mean, there's a lot in there. I just touched the surface. So what do you think going through those methodologies, the different ones and, and really understanding them, then you've got a, a tremendous amount of work experience where you applied them. What are some that really stick out to you today that have uh, the, the most practical value as you're working with people? To me, to me I think, the um, theory of constraints has got to be the one. I think everyone in the TOC, theory of constraints community, yeah, we, we don't understand why everybody doesn't love it as much as we do. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, some of the time it can be maybe a bit academic, but really at the end of the day, the thing that I really like about TOC as opposed to the other methodologies, it tells us where to focus. It's going to deliver the greatest value. Yeah. Like if you just take like a lean or a six sigma, you go, okay, well, there's problems here, there's waste, therefore, you know, it should be eliminated. And I guess yeah. to a large yeah. extent, kind of lean thinks that, you know, all waste is created equally. Well, TSE mm -hmm. kind of has a bit of a different view and saying, well, look, this waste is more important than that waste. And maybe in some of the ways, like lean kind of tries to eliminate waste everywhere where from a TOC perspective, some of that, we don't consider that to be waste. That's protection. Like, you know, for example, mm -hmm. making sure that your slowest resource has always got something to work on. 
is a mm -hmm. protective mechanism for that resource. So the other guys run out, well, it doesn't matter because it's all going to have to come through this resource. Mm -hmm. And it's really looking at it holistically. And that's, that's the other good thing. And like, it doesn't, you know, as with some of the other methodologies, the assumption is like, if we deal with all the little pieces individually and get them working really well, that then the whole thing will flow nicely, but it doesn't work like that. And that's why no one's really getting a lot of, ex um, the results that we expect with, you know, with TSE comes in and goes, okay, well, let's look at this holistically and let's, let's kind of focus. So then you go, okay, well, this area is the problem. So maybe lean is a good tool or six Sigma is a good tool for dealing with this particular problem. Yeah. And then, you know, in some cases like, and that's the other thing, well, I guess with six Sigma versus TSC, like six Sigma almost says, well, let's eliminate waste. Let's get rid of it all. It's, you know, also not waste variation. Mm -hmm. Where TOC kind of says, well, let's accept it. You know, we, we know that there's going to be some variation and we, we buffer for it. So we allow for it. And then we don't have to worry about being so precise. It's not the same some circumstances where, um, you know, reducing the variation doesn't make sense, but it's about, you know, getting, okay, getting focused on this is the problem area. And now what's the best tool to solve this? I and think you of, described it well. I think you okay. described that well because TOC, I, 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 I love listening to you describe it because uh, A, the, we're, we're getting into the background of, of what I think is really, really key in the execution work you do. But B, you know, when, when you look at theory of constraints like that, that is a great way to look at what should I work on first? Because we very few organizations have the resources to work on everything. And as yeah. you said, even if we work on everything, it may not be what we want because I might work on an area that is a constraint in my in my flow yeah. or process or whatever, but I may not do enough to make it so it's not a constraint anymore. And I really didn't do anything more than the, the incremental improvement I got out of it. But it does show you where we should focus our efforts is the big thing. Absolutely. And it brings it back to the bottom line results because obviously as an organization, you know, we need to get work through our organization. That's what matters at the end of the day. Because, you know, if one department's running faster, but we're not really getting any more out, well, then, you know, I guess in some cases, yes, you might be helping to reduce your operating expense, which, mm -hmm. which obviously has a bottom line impact, which is great. And I think, you know, typically with those other methodologies, kind of, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might have this noisy, <laughs> noisy area, noisy department, and they get all the focus and the resource to fix them when really there's not really overall benefits for the whole yeah. organization. So it's, yeah. it's a little bit skewed like that. So. So as you look at this and working at, as you did in the past and you got some great experience there, um, how do you think that that really prepared you to do what you do now in execution? Is it just the, the fact that you had to work on so many processes? I mean, you're a quality auditor. You were, you were, there are a lot of things that you were doing there. So I think it, it, it's, it's, it really, to me, it gives me like a structure, I think. Yeah. a very holistic structure that you can apply because you know some of these things are like guidelines they're principles and it's like mm -hmm. you don't have to follow it to the lee to the to the letter you yeah know, quite often you will see that with lean and even with toc there's kind of too much you know following the book exactly yeah when really you've got to be well this is this environment and it might be some of the principles still apply and how you apply that principle in this environment might be slightly different or maybe in another environment, this principle well, it doesn't have too much of an impact. So it's it's kind of, I've got the different tools in the toolbox, I guess, through the experience. Yeah. And then that just gives me the, the real holistic structure. Because, yeah. you know, when I've done things in the past, it's, um, it's really when I learned to, I think, oh, geez, I got really bad for a while because a lot of the things I had, work to set up and structure well i kind of realized all of a sudden they didn't really add any value they just kind of created work or not necessarily created work they made work easier in some extent but mm -hmm. they didn't have a um a bottom line impact or an overall impact and some of these things were kind of i guess one thing we often say in tsc is like local optima you know we try and optimize our local department at the expense of the overall system 
Mm -hmm. So it just, you know, that was a real kind of a breakthrough for me in terms of being, okay, now let's look at that big picture and what's the impact on our, on our throughput and then our inventory and our operating expense. And then through that, able to focus a lot more and, you know, get things to flow. Yeah. Yep. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. So when you're talking about execution and you're looking at uh, you're look you're going in and starting to talk to somebody about hey they want to improve execution so we're going to sit down we're going to start talking about things what are some of the first conversations that you're going to have with with a client as you're going in there and they want to go they want to execute better right yeah so i guess the couple of the key principles are the um making things visible because okay. you know normally if you think about a department We've normally got good visibility with inside our own department or that one department. Mm -hmm. You know, we all kind of know each other. We work together. We kind of take inputs from someone else. We do something and then it goes out. So mm -hmm. we can't often see what's going on in the other departments. You know, and quite often a lot of the problems occur at the interface between one department and the next. And sometimes they've got different objectives. So they're creating, we kind of engineer conflicts into our processes some of the time. Mm hmm so by making the it visible, we're then able to get everybody to see the situation and they can get this shared view. So, you know, if we, if by making it visible, we're kind of laying out the basic processes, you know, what steps we have to go through inside the organization and then where the work is at with inside the organization. So then everyone can kind of see like a big map. Mm -hmm. We can see, okay, the work's stuck here. Or, you know, we can see that there's problems in this area. So then we can start to then, well, departments can start to see their impact on other areas and vice versa. So as they can see the big picture now, they can then start to then collaborate. They can start to work together. Because mm -hmm. now they're kind of going, okay, well, we need to get this stuff through. And, you know, if I don't help you with this, well, then I'm going to run out of work next week or we're going to be late with this. So by making it visible, We've given a, I guess, a shared view and we all agree on that's where the work's at. And then we can start to, you know, okay, well, these are the problems. What are we going to do to solve those problems? Because a lot of the time, I guess the other key principle is like value added and recognizing that. So a lot of things that we do are not always value added. Like if you go into a meeting, a lot of the time we're kind of chatting about, well, where's the work at? Where's the problem or who's to blame? things like that. We're not really going, okay, well, here's the situation. Here's where it's stuck. You know, what are we, what resources do we need to allocate mm -hmm. to fixing that problem? Now, all of a sudden, instead of the time being spent doing something that's not going to help flow, we're putting the resources onto something that's going to help flow. And then yeah. it will start to, to happen. And the other thing that quite often, well, well, that has to happen as part of that is also like a, a unified priority system or UPS, as I like to call it. That's if we think, you know, we want each department to do a good job. So we tend to assign them metrics. So they've all got their own metrics and to do a good job, they're doing what's best for their department. You know, so they, they will try to, for example, I don't know, maybe group things together to maximize their output and reduce setups. Mm -hmm. But the negative side to that is some of the time, well, they're working on things that we don't need yet. And so that's going to create working progress upstream. And maybe the guy who's next in line, well, he doesn't have the bits that he needs because I'm busy working on something else that we don't need. Yeah. So by having, by aligning the priorities now, okay, we're all got, we all agreeing that these, these are our priorities and we can then start to focus on them, which then I guess leads into measurements. So, the, you know, we've got measurements aligned with, I guess, local measurements aligned with global measurements. So when you talk about that, the measurement, okay, let's back up a little bit. I like okay. that. I like to talk about the prioritization because yeah, you know, what we're working on first and, and, and as, yeah. as far as a sequencing of, of what we need to do first. Yeah. Um, when you start to talk about measurements is speed through the process. Is that your primary overall uh, goal is to reduce speed through process from A to Z, 
or you know we're talking about execution factor is that what we're trying to do or or what do you use yeah, we're we'll trying to get the work through as fast as possible mm -hmm. so i guess if you look well what's stopping it coming through as fast as possible so some of the time it might be look okay well maybe a process takes longer than it should mm -hmm. so that's one thing that could be improved but that's that quite often takes a lot more effort so really what we're trying to do is eliminate the non-value out of time. Ah. So quite often work takes so long to get through because we've released too much work. You know, it's like if you have to drive into the into work or something. If you if you leave in the middle of the night, you can get there in half yeah. an hour. But if you go peak hour when everyone's yeah. out there, it's going to take you an hour. It's still yeah. the same distance, but, you know, mm -hmm. if we release too much work, well, that slows us down. Well, and two, when you look at, I mean, if you do, as you do, work on lean, you realize that a, a small fraction of our time is actually doing value-added work and the rest of it's not. And if you can eliminate that, you're, you go a lot faster, a lot easier. So, right. yeah, that's, that's a great point in there. So how many, this is a good a question. When, you, when you're looking at a process like that, how many times do you step into situations where at the intersections of one department to another department that they're doing things to slow the next department down and they really don't even realize it? That, that happens all the time, really. And yeah. it's not until they can, I think, see the bigger picture that we can start to align, align them. And that's really going back to, like, if we're using a visual board to establish our priorities, mm -hmm. really what we're trying to do is get the whole organization like representatives of each organization because they're representing the different process steps mm -hmm. to work together. And what we really want to focus on first is the blockages, you know, so where has flow stopped? So if ah. my work's coming along and, you know, I can't complete this because I don't have a tools broken or the customer hasn't approved the artwork or something like that, that is a very high priority because now I've done all this work today and I can't move on. Mm -hmm. So our highest priority really is anywhere that the work has stopped. And usually we'd have like a, a red card to stick on the board so we can make it visible. Okay, here's the problem. Here's what we need to do to fix it. And this is the next, in I think the important one, yeah, the potential problems. Like in that sense, work hasn't stopped yet, but I might say to you, well, look, you know, we haven't got this artwork approval yet. If we don't have it by two o'clock tomorrow, well, then work's going to stop. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting to be proactive because we can kind of tell everybody, well, look, you know, it's not a problem yet, but it's about to be a problem. So then yeah. we can get everyone, folks, okay, well, shit, if we don't get that done, we're going to have trouble. We're going to have trouble. So that's kind of our next level of priority. Yeah. And then over and above that, it's just making sure the the day to day stuff. And, you know, we don't need to talk about things that are flowing normally, to to be fair, because, you know, work's going to get released and it's going to get done. And if it's all just going along merrily, well, there's not really value added to kind of talk about it. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, if we're focusing on the things that are stopped or about to be stopped, then that becomes more value added time spent. More value added time means more flow, more throughput better results. Yeah. And how many times do people, cause you talk about getting things visual and how much does it help just to take that step? Well, like I think people sometimes will go, Oh, they didn't realize that this was causing the other person a problem. So it's a bit enlightening for them sometimes to go, Oh, geez. <laughs> I had no idea or I can sort of see, well, you've got a problem there and, you know, maybe it makes sense that I, I can help you out and give you some resources or something to fix that mm -hmm. now so that, you know, you're better off and I'll be better off in the next few days. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I in past experience, I've seen where that makes it just, just, you know, doing process mapping or something like that just walking through the process and talking to talking to the different departments going okay what do you do now what or walking through the flow of of making something or completing an order or whatever you're talking about through the entire organization from the time you receive it all the way to the time that the product goes out the customer's invoice for the product and everything that 
people do that. There's just this, this, this enlightened, it's enlightenment that they gain from that. It's like what I'm doing causes you a lot more work or I'm doing something that as you referred to before is non-value added at all that I don't even need to be doing anymore that we yeah. should just stop. And I think that when you're talking about execution and accelerating execution, one, the visual, visualization step has to be critical in it. I would think. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the first steps really. Yeah. Cause once you, yeah. you that's the foundation for everything. Cause it's the, it's a foundation tool basically to that facilitates everything because like we were sort of saying before if until i get that visibility i just think that you know maybe you're just don't care about what i need to do or mm -hmm. <laughs> care about things overall and it's not till we can actually sort of you know start to see that we can start to i guess um empathize with others and you know get that greater understanding and that you know that bigger picture sort of higher level importance yeah so as you've done this what what are some kind of before and after speed throughput speed or or measures that you're doing what are some before and after that you've seen that are are pretty cool when you've done done this mm -hmm. you get a fairly good um like 25 30 percent reduction in wow. um in lead times yeah. So things will certainly start to flow a, a lot faster. And um, yeah, I guess it depends on, on the actual situation. Yeah. 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 So they all, they all kind of vary, but definitely, you know, we start to get a lot more, a lot faster flow through the organization. So 25, 30%, not unheard of, even faster yeah. sometimes just to get that work, work flowing. And then you get the, you know, the output and all the benefits that come with it. Yeah. Yeah, you talk about you talk about uh, X-ray vision. Thinking about execution gives you X-ray vision. What do you mean by that? I thought that was pretty okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, well, I guess we've been talking about this visibility. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. normally the problem is like departments can't. I can see their area, but they can't see the big picture. It's all fuzzy. So because they're, you know, kind of in the fog, so to speak, they can see here and go, okay, yep, this all makes sense. And then by making it all visible, we're getting what I call X-ray vision because now I can see the whole process. I can see through everything and where everything's at. Mm -hmm. So now I can uh, sort of see not only where it's at and I can see future problems coming. So I can kind of crystal ball into the future and go, well, look, I don't like what's happening here. I need to make some adjustments or do some things now so that, you know, that future is going to be better for me. Yeah. So when you use this process, are you typically using this in a production process or is it a business process or, or where, where do you usually find people applying it the most? It's, um, a the principles apply, I guess it's to the whole business and typically okay, the problems the are related to manufacturers or project environments. Uh -huh. Like I was thinking about, you know, do I split the two and to have like a, uh, you know, one based around projects and one based around manufacturing, but really the, the problems are essentially the same and the principles are the same. They just apply differently, slightly in different environments. And then yeah. it, it, sometimes it's got to do with how we, we structure the boards, you know, so that, you know, the, this visibility, this execution board that gives us the visibility, um, like in a manufacturing environment, we might be looking at um, different orders, for example, mm -hmm. where if it's a project, we might be looking at different deliverables or like different projects in a project portfolio. So yeah. it's getting the right level of, detail that solves the problem because we want to we want to keep it simple but we we don't want to get into too much detail because then it becomes too yeah. cumbersome and it, it's, mm -hmm. it's about striking that right balance that i've you know getting the right visibility so that you can go okay yep this is simple it's easy to manage we can see where it's at and it's helping us improve the flow yeah yeah that's good stuff because i i tell you from from experience, what I've seen, you know, the things that you can do when you look at a business end to end like that, 
and and how yeah. it, not just not just the physical but electronic paper product uh you know all the way out to suppliers back to suppliers works all the way through and when you look at that it really is amazing how much opportunity there is to get better yeah it sure is yeah. it's like yeah. you know we've tried to obviously do these things in order to you know we obviously but if we put those processes in place and some measurements around it and what have you you know with good intentions but like i saying quite often it's just like it's the cause of the problem <laughs> yeah 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 so have you so have you been involved where where uh you're doing this and helping somebody and it really makes like a quantum jump like they go oh we just we just doubled the throughput speed or cut it in half or whatever you want to say but we really made a huge jump and and if so what were the kind of things that they figured out to do that because that's always interesting to see yeah um let's see so it's certainly been um i guess Yes, circumstances where we've, you know, really created that um, visibility outside of, so if people, you know, out, well, within the supply chain, next steps, mm -hmm. have, you know, in, like in a project environment, have been really able to see and get confidence as to what's going on and where it's at. Okay. You know, so there's quite often, there's a lot more, yeah, quite often what we think it's going to be and how it ends up being is very different. You know, so things yes. start to become a lot more more believable. Yes. And then, you know, you start to get that. Um, it does become easier, too, for the people quite often because, okay, they know, okay, well, look, i got to focus on this and this. This is more important than trying to focus on everything and, you know, getting all these distractions in the way. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So you you wrote a book. Uh, recently executing at ludicrous yeah. philosophy uh, or velocity. I, I love the title. So what, what really inspired you to write? Yeah, I guess I've always wanted to, I guess, write a book and I've got this knowledge that, you know, it's a good way to share it. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, I want organizations to improve and be better because, you know, when organizations are doing well, well then, that's good for the economy and that's good for everybody. You know, so we need successful organizations to, you know, provide goods and services that we all need and to employ people and, you know, make it sort of better for everybody. And so I just yeah. had to put this knowledge together in a way that I could share it and the way that too, that you could, you know, I tried to write it the book. So it's sort of split into two sections. The first section is about the principles about, you know, what, what's important, like, why mm -hmm. is collaboration important and why is visibility and value added time? And then in the second half, I put it all together and applied those principles and explained how to build a, a visual execution board for your environment. Oh, so yeah. by reading the book, you could go off and actually, if you're like a do-it-yourself type person, you could actually go off and, well, the intention is you could go off and actually do it. Give it a try, yeah. Give yeah. it a try. And then from that, obviously, if you needed more help, well, then, okay, yeah. well, we can come along and help you. But, yeah, you know, so it's horses for courses, I guess, and sort of try to yeah. create it so there's something for everybody. And it, it also gives you a bit of a um, credibility, I guess, because you've written a book. I've written a book on execution yeah. now. So yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. it does help in, in that sense. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, then, so as you're doing this, uh, we talked about, I saw something about protective flow manufacturing and let's talk about that a little bit and how that's a, a tool in your toolbox and, and what you're using that for. Sure. So, um, protective flow manufacturing essentially takes a lot of the principles which are in my book and it does it with software. So okay. it's specifically tailored towards, uh, manufacturers. And I guess if we go up a step, like take a big picture view, yeah. So we want, and in any organization, we want everyone to focus on the highest priority jobs or work. Mm -hmm. And we want to get that through the organization as quickly as possible. So yeah. I figured we were creating a priority and typically we then would create a plan and then we'd execute the plan. So, but normally trouble with planning, it's like they say it's invaluable, but you know, as soon as the boots hit the floor, it's out the window. So, 
really, you know, we had to kind of, well, it's, it's been flipped around. So, you know, if we're trying to plan something for weeks in advance, well, then, you know, it gets less and less accurate. There's more uncertainty. And mm -hmm. obviously, as we run it closer, we've got a bit more uncertainty about it. So what the protective flow basically does, instead of planning and execute, we first execute and then we plan. So our execution is based upon the priorities and those priorities are determined by the work orders with the greatest threat of being late. So we're okay. looking at how much work's remaining and how much of a buffer there is. So that tells us like, sometimes if, typically like with the scheduling system with finite scheduling, it's all based around want dates. And so that would mean a work order that's supposed to be shipped next week would take priority priority over something say you've got to ship in three weeks time or a month's time. But that work order that's supposed to ship in a month's time might be a greater risk of being late because you know, by the time you send it out for serv outside services and it comes back and everything else, with this guy the next week, well, you, you might be pretty much home and hosed. Yeah. So by looking at a priority based upon its threat of being late, we've got an instantaneous priority. So we're looking at, you know, how much buffer is being consumed, um, you know, material availability, other information to give us an instantaneous priority. So it's at that point in time. Then the other bit then comes about planning. So it gives us a crystal ball. So we can kind of simulate the future and we can see that, well, look, Based upon the current situation right now and what's been happening, we can see that there is a problem. There's going to be a problem in these areas. So we can then start to influence our future by, for example, you know, what happens if we run some extra shifts or, you know, we um, look at getting extra machines or we outsource things. We can then start to be proactive about our future so that we're ensuring we're getting things out on time and, where we, you know, we're reacting to the situation. And, and yeah. the other good thing about it is you don't have to replace your ERP system. So we can take the information from everyone's ERP system, bring it into protective flow, and there's a cloud-based solution that delivers to the shop floor, and then everyone knows what their priorities are, and they follow that to, to get the work through. Yeah, and I, I, I imagine when you're prioritizing by what's got the biggest risk in being late, you can reduce the amount of late things significantly Absolutely. at the end. Yeah. So that's the same sort of principles with the boards there. We're sort of looking at red tags and the group collaborating, but with mm -hmm. protective flow, it's a bit more um, metric based, based upon, you know, estimated times and buffer remaining. And it sort of mm -hmm. happens or what happens automatically by the system. So in some sense, that's, that's a bit easier and we can just believe it. I mean, once we get to the right level, we can just believe it and follow it. Yeah, yeah. very we've cool. Got, you know, an agreed priority and we're, we're off. And away you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what do you have coming up for, for the rest of this year? What's what's exciting in your world? What What's happening? Yeah, um, I guess protective flow has really become my, my core offering. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it just it it comes very natural to me because I've done a lot of ERP implementations and things over the years, and yeah. you know they haven't always delivered the value that we want from it. Where I think with Protective Flow, it really is focused around delivering value to the organization. We're eliminating the late problem, you know. So everyone, we're, we're producing our work in progress. We're increasing our throughput. Our um, cash flow is improving. Mm -hmm. So it's really delivering, I think, a lot of value to businesses. So that's become yeah. my core, um, I guess, my core product, my core focus. And, yeah. you know, so I've got a, quite a few prospects on the go with that at the moment. Nice. And, um, awesome. yeah, we've just signed on some customers. So we're getting excited to do that. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty exciting. That's awesome. And... And so if people want to get your book, I know we got a special offer today that you're you're going to do, but is it available on Amazon? Is it available on Audible? Where where can they get the book? At the moment, you can get it from Amazon. If yeah, you on Kindle. Good. Or you very can also good. get it directly from the executionfactor.io. All right. Awesome. And for those of those that are listeners today, if you want to, there's a, a code 
to get to get a, a free PDF version of the book, I believe. And it's yes, the faces, the faces of business with the first no spaces, the first the first letter in each word capitalized. Did I say that right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome because it, it's going to be great. I've got mine downloaded. I'm going to be reading that. And uh, we can take a look and, and learn more about this. What are some of the best ways to reach out to you, uh, Trevor? And, and if somebody wants to talk to you about executing faster. Sure. So you can hit me up on LinkedIn. That's probably one of the easiest ways. Or just Very head good. on over to the executionfactor.io. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been great having you here today, Trevor. I, I really enjoyed this because... I know this kind of thing. I know you're talking about it in manufacturing. I know there's a lot of other applications and other companies as well, because Lord knows there's a lot of bottlenecks to solve in, in business. And, uh, and yeah, seeing the big picture will let you do it. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks. Thanks so much. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for being here today, Trevor. I want to thank all the listeners for joining us this afternoon and, and listening about the keys to accelerating execution. You know, we talked about the overall visibility so you can really see where things are, are log jamming to help speed that up. You talked about theory of constraints and how that helps you kind of identify the, the constraints in it and then some of the tools that you've used to do it. Um, anything else I've, I've missed there, Trevor? No, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Thank everyone. So much. We'll be back again next week with another Faces of Business. See you, everyone. Peace, guys. <laughs>